Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to learn how to begin to analyze our statistical data and in this case we're going to be doing a uh, histogram which is a graph that sort of shows in a bar chart sort of way what your data is uh, looking at. So it's basically going to be drawing a bar chart on the screen. So the first thing we need to realize, I'll just give you a little bit of a talk here, is that this is a calculator. It is not a full-blown computer. So it can do some really impressive things for a handheld device like plot this data, but don't expect you to have, you know, don't don't expect yourself to have available every single statistical little uh, option in there and uh, to have full flexibility over everything. So it does a good job, but certainly if you have very large data sets or very specific tweaking you want to do, I mean, a computer is really a better place to go. But certainly you can do the basics on this guy. So what we need to do to plot this uh, histogram is uh, to basically go first into the mode menu and make sure we're in function mode, which we are. Let's go ahead and quit that. Next, we need to go open our data. So go to data slash matrix, and we want to open our data set. Or you could create a new one, but since we've already created one, G for grades, we already did that a minute ago, so we'll open that up. And uh, we see we'll have lots of grades here. Now, let's say that um, we want to add a few grades here, some outliers. So these are grades that, you know, everybody else did pretty good, mostly A's and B's, some C's. But let's say there was the one kid in class that just did terrible. He's got a 52. So he's what we call an outlier. Everybody else in here, all 21 other kids, did more or less pretty good, you know, within reason. And then there's the one kid that had the flu or wasn't there half the time. And so he's called an outlier, a statistical outlier. And, and the reason I added here is so that we can visualize what an outlier looks like in a histogram in this section. And in the next section, we're going to visualize this in terms of a box plot. And we'll talk about those later. So here's our data. Notice that once we're looking at our data, uh, we have our data that we're interested in in column 1, C1, and we notice up at the top we have plot setup. So in order to plot these guys, you need to go into plot setup from within the data matrix editor because you need to tell the calculator what column you want to plot and what type of plot you want. So you would think you would do that stuff under the Y equals menu, but all of this stuff is so specific to statistics that they put that menu inside the data matrix editor. So go and open your data so that you're looking at it and then you go to the plot setup from within the data matrix editor. All right, so we have a bunch of what we call these stat plots that we can generate, plot one, two, three, four, and so on. And uh, so this is, you can sort of think of this as the Y equals menu for statistical plots. So we want to define what plot one is going to look like. We need to tell it what column of data we care about. We need to tell it what type of plot we want to plot. We need to give it some information. So under the with plot one highlighted, we want to define this plot. So let's hit F1. Okay, so here comes a, a, uh, a screen. We can select the type of plot. We're going to be going through these uh, sort of one by one here, but for now we're going to go and do a uh, histogram, uh, which is basically a bar chart. It's just another way of saying bar chart. All right, now this screen is a little bit difficult to read, okay? So that's why I'm going through it with you. Uh, usually you have X and Y here. Y is grayed out. The reason there's X and Y here is because when you do a scatter plot of X, Y points, you need to tell the calculator the column of data that deals with X and the column of data that deals with Y, and it's going to treat them as X, Y points and plot them for you. But we're not doing a scatter plot. We're doing a histogram. So what it's really asking here is, when it says X, it's really asking for where is your data? What column is your data? Maybe you have a data spreadsheet that's five columns. Maybe you have class one, class two, class three. Which data do you want to plot? So we have to tell it that. And the only way to really do it is to type the column in that we care about. So we're going to type in C1. So there's a C and there's a 1. This is column 1. Remember I told you, and we, we just saw a minute ago, our data is in column 1. That is what you need to type in here. If your data is in column 2, you type in C2, uh, and so on. So we'll do that. Uh, bucket width. width. This is uh, specific to a histogram. Basically, it wants to know, it's going to draw these bar, this bar chart for you. It wants to know how wide do you want the columns. Um, 
So if we leave it as one, then it's going to have a very granular graph that's going to show us how many students got a 93, how many students got a 94, how many students got a 95, 96, 97, 98. That's usually not what we want. So let's put a five here. This means that every five grades may be, you know, between 90 and 95 because that's five units apart, between 90 and 95, how many students got between there? How many students got between 95 and 100? So the bucket width is kind of like you take all of your data and you divide it into equal widths. And we're going to see how many students fall into the buckets, and that's what we're going to be plotting. This will be very, very uh, easy to understand here in just a second. Frequency with categories, this is a little bit more of an advanced function. It's not something I'm going to go over now, just leave it to know. Basically, when you enter in your data manually, you're just going to leave it to know. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, go ahead and hit enter to save it. So you see now we have a definition for plot one, and we have a check mark to plot one. So this sort of function is just like y equals. Whichever plot has a check mark is the one that we are actually going to be plotting. And this other material here, this is telling us that our x data is in C1. Our bucket width is 5. So you can tell at a glance what it is we have. And this little icon here means that it's a bar chart or a histogram. So if you have 10 of these plots or, or 7 of these plots defined, you could quickly go down and say, you know, see uh, you know, what type of plot it is and some general stuff. So we're about ready to plot this guy. Uh, what we need to do now is actually invoke the plot. So we could just go to the graph menu here and it would go ahead and graph it for us here. But what we really want to do is go and, and take a look at the zoom options that we have. So let's go to the window menu and we'll hit F2 for zoom. You see there's lots of different zoom options here but if you go up here we have zoom data. This is like zoom fit for graphs. In other words it tries to look at the data you have and it tries to choose an x-axis and a y-axis that will more or less make it zoom in and fit that screen. So we used to use zoom fit when we had functions and it'll zoom into that function. You can select zoom data. You don't have to, but it, it just makes it easier. So let's go ahead and hit zoom data. All right, now here is our histogram. We have a nice bar chart. Notice it tried to choose a y-axis so that these bars are reasonable size. It chose an x-axis for us because we have a little outlier out here. It chose the x-axis for us as well. If you want to change the way the graph looks, you can go into the window menu and you can change these. See, it's got y from negative 10 to 10. What we want to do here, let's go ahead and set this y max. Let's keep it at 10 just like it had and let's go up to y min and let's make it negative one. Basically we'll kind of stretch the axis here. We'll go back to graph and we should see it looking a little bit better. See because it initially had y going from negative 10 to positive 10 and so here we just sort of change that a little bit so we could read it better. So this looks like a bar chart or a histogram that you might see in your textbook and what we've done is we have our grades kind of going across like this uh, in, in a bucket width of five grades and it's telling us how many students are in each bucket and you can read it off. Here's one student, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, the little tick marks there. So you can kind of see at a glance, okay, there's the one outlier down here. He's way out in the weeds. Most of the students were clustered around here. There's some students with very high grades, some students with kind of median, kind of not so great grades, and then there's quite a few students up here in the A, B range up here. Now if you really want to know what's going on in this graph, you can hit the trace button, F3 and it'll put a little cursor right here on this little bar and it's telling us this bucket is from 47.2 to 52.2 that's a difference of five grade, five units in grades the bucket width this is our grade a 47.2 to a 52.2 there was one student in that bucket n is equal to one because that was the one outlier we had if we hit this over arrow then uh, over here we have zero students from 52.2 to 57.2. So we have zero students along all of this area because we just had the outlier. Now when we get over here from 72.2 to 77.2, we had two students in that bucket. From grades 77 to 82, we had uh, four students. In the range of 82.2 to 87.2, we only had one student. Then we had a whopping eight students from 87.2 to 92.2. And then we had fewer students, five students that got solid A's here. And then we actually had one student that 
that was in the range of 97.2 to 102.2. And I just remember that that's the guy that got 100. Uh, so there was one student there. So that's how to use the trace functionality. And um, that's you know handy. I mean, a bar graph is just one of the easiest things to visualize data. It works when you have a list of data. You're not plotting points. You're just trying to see generally how the spread looks. And you can tell at a glance that the sp what the spread looks like. You can tell that most of your students passed. You had some really good students on the high side, and you had some outliers here. And that's really all a histogram is for. So if you have a list of data, and you just want to visualize it, a histogram is a good option. The TI-89 can do that for you. Just enter the data. You can sort the data if you like. Go into the plot setup function. Uh, select histogram. Choose a bucket width. If we choose a different bucket width, the graph will look different, but it will contain the same information. So that's a little bit arbitrary and up to you. And then when you go into the plotting, you can ch change the window uh, definition to make the plot fit the screen. But just remember that zoom data is a good place to start because it'll attempt to fit the screen to the data that you have. So go in there, create a little data set for yourself uh, in your own calculator, create a little histogram. It's a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's uh, not a big deal and it's super handy to have on a test.